Happy Sabbath, folks. John. Happy, Happy Sabbath. Sabbath. A beautiful sunny day in the middle of winter. What do we say? Thank you. We thank God, don't we? We thank God. It's been a very cold winter so far, but God is good. And today he has given us the sunshine. So we praise God. We praise God. We praise God. Um, today we're going to be looking at Jonah. It was quite interesting that my brother here mentioned Jonah during Sabbath school. And so our sermon today is on Jonah. Because while when we look at the story of Jonah, most of us will think, how could you do that? But we may also want to consider and ask ourselves, if we were in Jonah's position, would we have done anything like that? So today I'm going to ask uh, Brother Atta, I don't know if you've given me ability to, yeah, to co-host so that I, oh, I am, okay, thank you very much. I hope there's nobody who's allergic to presentations. I always like to have things, I'm a visual learner. And the other reason I do it is as I grow older, I find that my writing is a bit slow and I forget, I don't finish writing the verses that the preacher is saying. <laughs> so I would rather display them and people have the time to write them down if they like, if they feel that it's important that they do that. So I will be presenting my um, sermon today. Okay. So. Bear with me. My stem is coming up. Okay, so I can't share now, can I? You got me on the screen. I, sh I should be allowed to share my screen rather than me being on the screen, not pinning me on the screen. <laughs> okay. Can you allow me to share now? You are co-host. Sorry? You are co-host. I am co-host. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, fantastic. We get there in the end. We get there in the end. Okay, right. So we are going to be talking about Jonah and screen sharing, and I hope you'll be able to see. The title is What or Whom Do You Fear? <laughs> Has anybody experienced fear here? Have we ever been frightened or afraid of anything? Anyone? I have, you have, all of us have. What is fear like? What does it feel like to be afraid of something? It's not a good sensation, is it? Not knowing what's going to happen next. Exactly. Fear is when we don't know what's going to happen next. And we are concerned that something dreadful might happen to us. And I'll give a background to the sermon we are talking about. We're not talking about what Jonah did, but we are talking about the fear that Jonah had. Briefly, people know, everyone knows the story of Jonah, don't we? Jonah was a prophet. And God had looked at a place called Nineveh, a city called Nineveh, which was like the capital of the world at that time, which was full of sin, where all the dreadful things you can think of were happening. And this God being God, he needed to give these people a warning to say, if you don't change your ways, you will be destroyed. And God does not do something before he's warned people. So he sent Jonah and said to Jonah, go, talk to my people. 
Let them repent. Mm -hmm. Warn them and tell them if they haven't, I will destroy the city in 40 days. Jonah knew God. And we're going to find that out in our verse today, which comes from Jonah 1 verses 8 to 9. Jonah 1 verses 8 to 9. And reading from the New King James Version, it says, then they said to him, tell us, for whose cause is this trouble upon us? What is your occupation? Where do you come from? What is your country? And what people are you? So he said to them, I am a Hebrew. And I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. The last statement tells us he knew God. And he feared God. But you know what? After God had sent him to go to Nineveh, he remembered all the stories that he had read or heard about Nineveh. And fear struck him. He became afraid. Became afraid because he thought, maybe if I go to Nineveh, there will be people who will murder me. They will come and steal from me, or oh, something dreadful will happen to me, or I might even be killed. So what does Jonah decide to do? Jonah decides, I'm not going to stay where I am. I'm going to run as far from Nineveh as I can. So Jonah goes on to the port, like the port of Dover here, when there's uh, ships that are sailing. And he decided he was going to go to Tachish, a city which was far away from there. So he boarded, he paid for his way to go. And when he got in there, he decided to go to the lower deck instead of to be the top deck. That's how fearful he was. And then he went to sleep. And while he was sleeping, this boat that he was in, or this ferry that he was in, started to be troubled because there were storms in the sea. They were being tossed to and fro. And these people were probably trans people and they had lots of cargo in them. And they had to throw things out so that they could lighten it. And they wondered what was going on. And after some time, when the storm persisted, they decided we need to pray. We need to pray to our gods. So they asked everyone to pray to their gods. It still didn't stop. And they remembered they had a passenger on the boat, on their ferry. They looked for this passenger and he had gone down to hide at the bottom. And so when they found him, that's when 1 Jonah 8 verse 9 comes in. That's when they went and said to him, please tell us, for whose cause is this trouble upon us? What is your occupation? And where do you come from? What is your country? And of what people are you? So he said to them, I am a Hebrew and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Any teachers in our midst? If you look at the questions that he was asked, he was asked, what is your occupation? He didn't tell them. They said, where do you come from? He didn't answer that question. What is your country? He didn't answer that either. Of what people are you? He answered that. He said, I am a Hebrew. But you know what? He answered something they hadn't asked him. They didn't ask him whom he feared. Mm -hmm. And he said, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. The sea is where they were being tossed by the storm. The dry land was where he wished he was, so he wouldn't be in the storm. So Jonah remembered to talk about God. Isn't that a paradox? That somebody who had been sent by God to go to Nineveh, who proclaims to fear God, actually didn't obey God. 
he decided to go his own way. You see, fear can be described in many ways. Sometimes we magnify fear. Sometimes something that is quite small becomes so big and it frightens us to a point where we can't even sleep. In Jonah's point of view, he decided, I'll run. But he forgot that God will see him wherever he is. Fear, someone described it, and this won't make any sense to you young people, but to the older people, many years ago, we used to have things called cameras, where you would take a photograph, and that photograph, you couldn't see it. You had to take it to someone who was specialized and had but the place where it was a dark room, where they would develop what was called a negative to bring the clear picture. Someone described fear as a place where negatives, that is the things that are negative in our lives, develop into something bigger. And sometimes it's totally unnecessary, we shouldn't do that. So Jonah had two fears. He had the fear of Nineveh. But as we read in verses eight to nine, he also feared God. The fear of Nineveh was not supposed to be his main problem because he had been sent by God. The fear of God, on the other hand, is something he proclaimed. He even answered the question he had not been asked. And what does it mean to fear God? Should we be afraid of God? Is it the same as the fear he had for Nineveh? No, of course not. So when we fear God, we respect him. We have awe of him. We respect him. We, re we give him reverence. We give him adoration. We honor him. We worship him. We have confidence in that he will see us through whatever problem we have. And this morning we were talking about offerings. We show gratitude to him because he's our God. And we love him because he loves us. But there is a fear that should be real to us, which is the fear of what happens if we disobey him. If we disobey him, the Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death. And that's something to be frightened of. So God will judge us, and that's the fear that we should have. So Jonah had these two fears, the fear of Nineveh, the fear of God. What do you have a fear of? Does the problem you have in your life today bring you so much fear, it stops you seeing the magnificence of God? Jonah had two fears. The fear of projected Im imagined things where we overreact, which Jonah did by running away and going into to, to, to a ferry that was going to a different way. His irrational fear, which is driven by worries about the worst case scenario. And that fear in Jewish, in Hebrew, is called Pashad fear. Then there's another fear, which is called Yira fear, which is the realization of God's greatness. God's greatness in that he is the God who looks after us. So when we go back to that verse that we read, verse nine, he said to them, I am a Hebrew and I fear God. I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. While he was in the middle of the storm, Jonah realized that he should not have feared Nineveh and the possible things that he had imagined about. He realized that what he should have done is continually fear God and trust God and revere God and use all those things we mentioned about the fear of God. If he had done that, he would have stayed on track. He would have gone directly to Nineveh. He wouldn't have tried to run away. He knew that God made the sea and the dry land. 
At that moment for Jonah, what mattered was being on dry land because the sea was threatening his life and the life of the other people. When this had happened, the people in the ferry decided that they had to do something about John. They asked him, what should we do then to stop this storm? And he said, throw me in the sea. At that moment, his fear had changed from the fear of the people of Nineveh. He didn't worry, he didn't fear the fact that he would drown anymore. He was prepared to be thrown to the bottom of the sea. He didn't know that God had a taxi waiting for him to take him to dry land. But what he knew and what he proclaimed was that he feared God who created the heavens, who the seas and the dry land. You see, the fear of God is so important. Many a time we get ourselves into storms where we shouldn't be because we have feared something and they've decided to find our own way out of a certain situation. And when we get into that situation, we find it's a stormy one. But the fear of God will help us. And Ecclesiastes 12 verse 13 says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments for this is man's fault. In the complete Jewish Bible, it reads more simpler words. It says, here is the final conclusion. Now that you have read everything and you know everything about God, fear God and keep his commandments. This is what human being, being you a human being is all about. Being a human being is meant to provide us with the understanding and the reverence for God. Once we put God ahead of everything, beyond, before any fears that come to us, we will have done what is expected of us. And God in his goodness will do what he does best which is to look after his own children. Proverbs 9 verse 10 says, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. If Jonah had been wise enough and had realized that there are lots of dangers on sea, he probably would have foreseen or thought, what if I drown in that ferry? He didn't think about it. All he thought about was, what if I get killed if I go to Nineveh? The knowledge of God brings understanding. So the fear of God is so important. The emphasis that I'm trying to put in today's sermon is, what do you fear and whom should you and shouldn't you fear? <laughs> do we fear the troubles that assail us? Do we fear the diseases that may come? COVID has been one of those things that we have had to live with. And there was a time when we were also afraid to even go out, even afraid to have our families come to visit us. And we had to wear masks because we were afraid of something that was totally invisible, which we couldn't see, but which had the danger of doing something to us. Sometimes we fear a few lots of things. This morning in Sabbath school, it was interesting how people were giving testimonies of how God comes through at a time when one could be afraid that they will not have food, that they will not be able to pay their bills, that they may not be able to pay for the wedding that they are planning. All those things are fears that happen to us. Those are irrational fears. That's the pashad fear that we shouldn't have. God himself has come to us and talks to us through his word. And in Deuteronomy 31, verse 6, he says, Be strong and be of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid. For the Lord your God is he who goes 
with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. If Jonah had remembered that, the God who sends him is the God of the sea and the land and all that is in it. He wouldn't have been so frightened. He would have just gone to Nineveh, delivered the message that he had been sent for to do, but he didn't. And like I said earlier on, we can look at Jonah and think how stupid he was. But let us reflect on ourselves. Have we had times when we have feared something beyond fearing God? And if we have done that, what if the outcomes been? <laughs> God himself made sure that he would give us a spirit of not fearing things, but fearing him, which is honoring him. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and sound mind. Do you think Jonah was in a sound mind when he decided to run away and go to catch a ferry that was going the opposite direction? No. Why had he lost his mind? Why? He's a prophet after all. And he should have known that God, who has sent him, will lead him and make sure he will be safe. But he didn't think about it at that time. What came into his mind was human nature took over. And human nature said, you're going to mm -hmm. die, Jonah. Don't go to Nineveh. And he didn't think of listening to the Holy Spirit saying, you have been sent by God who created the heavens and the earth and everything that is in it. So God says to us, we are his children. He said to Jonah, you are my prophet. I am sending you to go to Nineveh. And when God speaks to us, he always makes it quite clear why we should trust him. In Isaiah 43, verses 1 and 2, he says, But now that says the Lord, who created you, O Jacob. And you can replace Jacob's name by your name. And he who formed you, O Israel, you could replace that with your name as well. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name, you are mine. If you are God's, God will take care of you. And this morning we have sung hymn 99 twice. Have you noticed that? We sang it in Sabbath school. We sang it again during divine service. God will take care of you. And it is so true. He goes on to say, when you pass through the waters, that's when your problems come. When things happen to you that may cause worry, remember, I will be with you. That's what God is saying in Isaiah 43, verse 2. And he says, when you go through the rivers, they will not overflow you. If Jonah had remembered that God is God, he would have known that he didn't need to go on a ferry. He could just have walked and gone to Nineveh. But God then goes on to say, if you walk through the fire, because some of our troubles feel like they're drowning us. We can't think, we can't breathe. People fall into deep depression because they are focusing on their problems instead of focusing on God. But God is saying, when you walk through the fire, sometimes these problems are like burning fire. We don't even know what to do, where to turn. He says, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. You may feel the heat, and that's what makes you realize you are in fire. But you know that's not the end of you, because God is there looking after you. We must remember when we have problems, when we have perplexities, that God is God. And in Proverbs 18, verse 10, it says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. We are safe in God's hands. When we fear God and we don't fear the problems that are causing us to worry, we will be safe. It may look a hopeless situation, but all we need to do is trust. 
and God will be with us and see us through. Proverbs 16 verse 3 says, commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. When you commit yourself, if Jonah had remembered who God is, the statement that he gave as an answer to the people on the ferry, if he had remembered that earlier, his thoughts would have been established in such a way he would have been wise enough not to run away and go and pay for a ferry, which he didn't need to, to, to pay for. So my message to you today, my brothers and sisters, is that we need not fear the problems that come to us. We need not fear these things, but we take them to God. Because God himself is looking after us. Because God himself is the one who made the heavens and the earth and all that is in it. Because God himself is the creator who cares for you and loves you so much that he would not want you to drown. You see, even for Jonah, <laughs> after all that had happened, and he said, throw me into the sea, they did. They threw him. And when they threw him into the sea, he was swallowed by a by, by fish. But one of the things we need to note is that in the time of trouble, Jonah actually managed to witness to the people who were in the ferry with him by reminding them, them that there is a God who created the seas and the dry land. Sometimes in the midst of our troubles, it may be the best time for us to be disciple makers, to remind others that there is a God. Rather than murmuring, we should praise. And people will know there is a God. And Jonah did that. When he was thrown into the sea, he was swallowed and he was spat at the end on dry land. And he went on to do his work. And what God performed was a further miracle because the city that was going to be destroyed, everybody turned around. They fasted, they prayed, they were forgiven, and the city was rescued. Sometimes we get ourselves into troubles when we need not to. You know, this same um, Isaiah verse that we talked about, Isaiah 43 verses one and two, is also has the lyrics, the lyrics of hymn 509, hymn 509 in our hymn. And I'm going to read the lyrics as I explain why it's so important to trust in God. It says, how firm a foundation, ye sayings of the Lord, sayings that everybody who believes in God, is laid for your faith in his excellent word. When you have faith, you have a firm foundation. Let us have faith no matter what we're going through. It might be looking for a job. It might be illness. It might be worrying about our loved ones who have got problems. God says, if we have faith, he will be with us. And the writer goes on, on the verse two of that hymn and says, fear not, for I am with thee. Oh, be not dismayed, for I am your God, and I'll still give you help. I will strengthen you and help you and cause you to stand, upheld by my righteous omnipotent hand. He goes on to say, when you walk through the deep waters, which is what we talked about earlier, God is going to be with you. But the key thing is the last verse where God says, the soul that on Jesus had leaned for help. God will not desert that soul God endeavors to will help, will help, will never, never forsake. So although hell may want to shake you, God will never, never forsake you. 
But what the other verse says is that sometimes God wants the dross, which is the bad things in our lives, to be shaken off. And when we go through trials, we need to ask why. Sometimes it's to strengthen us. Sometimes it's to show God's greatness in our lives. And sometimes it's just that the devil will be wanting to draw us to his side. Like he said to Job through his wife, curse God and die. Let us not do that. Let us not have the fear of death, the fear that will stop us from going through to God with our faith. Let us hold on to that faith and let God be God in our lives. So in conclusion, don't be a victim of the Bashad fear, the fear that is irrational, the fear of the things that we go through our lives, but be a firm believer in the Iraq fear, which is the belief of knowing that there is a God who cares, a God who is able, a God who is loving, a God who is forgiving, a God who can stop the storms, a God who will, even when you are about to drown to the depth of the sea, will bring a fish to swallow you and bring you to the dry land. It happened to Jonah. It can happen to you. It can happen to me. So as we think of ourselves as people with problems, let us think of ourselves as people with a God who can do all things for our God. That is my prayer for us today. May the Lord help us and may we commit all our works to God and he will give us the wisdom of remembering and knowing that with God, all things are possible. Thank you. Thank May you. God bless you all. Mm -hmm.